Welcome back to lesson 18 of the Bioptimizers Healing Health and High Performance, your complete guide to biological optimization. And today we're going to talk about probiotics. And probiotics is such a, an expanding field. It's so exciting. I mean, most of us have heard about antibiotics and some of us have heard about probiotics but I'm also going to touch today about super probiotics, which I feel is the ultimate in immune system optimizer. But let me get down to what I call bacteria. Probiotics is a, just a fancy name for good bacteria. When it comes to bacteria, and so many people have, you know, I, I was raised up in my education system, it said bacteria was bad. Bacteria was these little bad guys that you wanted to eliminate at all cost. And, you know, the reality is, is modern medicine has done a great job of increasing sanitization and eliminating bacteria that causes infection and disease and that sort of thing. And of course, with the development of antibiotics, which is we'll get into in just a second. So probiotics are a form of bacteria. And I, I categorize these into three different areas. The good, the bad, and then some people will call the ugly, of course, if you like that Clint Eastwood movie, but we'll call these the opportunists. Okay, so inside your digestive system, there is approximately 500 different strains. Imagine that 500 different types of bacteria living inside your body. And some of these are essential for you to live, to digest your food. In fact, if you didn't have bacteria inside your body, you'd die. It's that simple. There's also, so there's about 10% of the bacteria inside your body are what we call good bacteria, friendly flora, um, probiotics. Okay, so this is, this is where we go to probiotics. These guys, okay? Then we have 10% bad guys, and we all heard about these type of strains, different bacteria that cause infection, the ones that, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I used to get all these sore throats and all the time I used to get bacteria infections in my throat and I had to take antibiotics. And so this is what caused a lot of the illnesses and, and what modern medicine developed was a thing called anti or antibiotics. So antibiotics are like they're like a bomb okay imagine this this is, this is my version of a bomb okay and what they do is they drop a bomb into your this is we'll call this is your inside your body inside here is your total bacteria pool if you will your bio terrain you'll hear that a little bit this here they drop a bomb in here and it blows up everybody okay it blows up the good and it blows up the bad and you go well wait there's only 20 percent yeah that's because there's 80% are what we call opportunists. In other words, when there's a shift between the good and the bad, these guys or certain strains will kind of proliferate. So, for example, a lot of people, almost everybody has a certain amount of candida. But if you create the right environmental condition, candida can grow exponentially. Likewise, if you create uh, the right, a different say bioterrain, what'll happen is right conditions, those bacteria won't cause any problems and so you won't have the side effects from candida. So this is very, very important. So what happened is modern medicine went out there and developed all these antibiotics and interesting enough, they started bombing these guys and you know took away a lot of the illnesses and stuff. But then something unexpected happened and that was antibiotics, some of these strains became, well, put that rest, they became resistant. In other words, if you try and destroy any, you know, a group of, of, of bacteria cultures, there's going to be a certain percentage of them that are going to mutate and adapt to those environmental conditions. And of course, most medical doctors will tell you now that many of the, what used to work 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago for antibiotics don't work anymore. Uh, one of my a uh, good friend is a fellow by the name of Dr. Horst Filzer, who's a vascular surgeon for Harvard, and he says that 
You know, about half the people who die from surgery don't die from the surgery. They actually die from infection. You've probably heard about some of these super bacterias like MRSA, right, or Salmonella, you might have heard. So some of these MRSA are like, these are like super bad bacterias. You get these things in your body, you got some problems. And of course, one of the worst places to be is actually at the hospital, the place that's supposed to help you. Now, again, where this whole concept of terrain, just so you know, if you want to go back and research this in history, there was two great guys out there. One was Beauchamp and one was Pasteur. Pasteur being the father of a lot of medical, you know, processes that we know today are the use of drugs. And he was one of the guys that were fundamental in developing antibiotics to blow up the bad guys. But what was interesting is there was another guy past, or in Pasteur's career as lab by the name of Beauchamp. And Beauchamp, he said, no, it's not about trying to destroy these things. It's about this, controlling the terrain. And if you're inside the health community, you're going to hear a lot about the bioterrain. Terrible writing again. I apologize for that. You're going to hear a lot about the biological terrain or your internal terrain or changing the terrain. There's a couple great guys out there like Dr. Robert Kassar. Uh, he's got some great stuff about you know changing the bioterrain so that you create this in what we call an optimal. Right? You want an optimal biology. That's why we call our company Bioptimizers. That's what we're doing. We're designing products and processes that help you get this optimized bioterrain. Now, of course, the, the rumor has it that on his deathbed past year said, you know what, Beauchamp is right. It's the terrain. I can't confirm or deny that. But what's interesting is here we are, you know, years and years later, and guess what? We're finding that we just can't wipe those guys out. So what do we do? How do we take control of this environment? How do we, how do we get in here and take control of it? And what we decided is, well, let's look out there and we have these, what I call super bad bacteria, okay? The antibiotic resistant super bacteria. Wouldn't it be interesting if we can make a super probiotic? So out there, there's probiotics. You've probably heard of them like acidophilus and things like that, that, you know, bifidus and a variety of different strains, and a lot of them are really good. They're called what's called a different type of strain. Th those are implant strains. So let me explain this to you so that you can understand, because I really, I mean, understanding this, in my opinion, is the, the future of the immune system, the future of becoming resistant to a variety of mutant strains that, well, are inevitably developing. It's just part of living in the modern world. So going back here. So we have regular probiotics, and then we can have super probiotics. And a super probiotic is the equivalent, so this is like, you know, acidophilus, right? You know, people hear a lot about this. Okay, and then you know you have your bad guys that's down there, the super bacteria like MRSA. Okay, so when you're looking for this, these are typically what's called an implant strain. What that means is they will come in and they'll colonize and they'll start building a, a, a strain. And very, very important if you're, you know, you don't have a great bacteria culture. And frankly, most people that I've coached, um, they really need a lot of help in getting their terrain back. So. These are implant strains. Basically, they, they colonize inside your, inside your you know, intestinal area, and they, they perform the function that they do. And uh, they, you know, it could be digesting food. It could be fighting off other bad bacteria and immune system. There's always like a little war going on in here for terrain. Imagine you know, little soldiers going back and forth with these bacteria. So what we decided is, well, we don't want to nuke things all the time. And antibiotics are used only in specific cases, and they're great for that. But once you've done antibiotics, you know, your terrain is going to be changed. This could be like, you know, 8%, right? And your bad guys could be 12% after, right? Or, or this could be a different number. And this is where people start having problems and variety of conditions, maybe after coming out of a medical situation. Keep in mind, the medical doctor is there to keep you alive as a last resort. They're not there to get you to the next level of health. That's what your Jedi Council team is for. That's why you're on this, is to find out what are the things you need. 
So a super probiotic is oftentimes what we call a transient strain. So what you do, how do you make a super probiotic? What you do is you take them through a process that it's like, it's like a Navy SEALs training, right? You know, you, you, you can go to the military and become a military guy, but if you really want to go to the next level, you need to be a Navy SEAL. The Navy SEAL is a special group that they deal with, you know, specific, very intense situations, and they go in, they go out, and they're done. And that's what we're doing with super probiotics. We were able to develop a strain, okay? So, you know, by optimizers, we have a patented, patented, that means no one else can do this, a patented probiotic that is transient, but you really need to see what this thing can do, what its capabilities are on the patent. You can go to our website at bioptimizers.com and read all about it. Basically, it's a proteolytic bacteria, a bacteria that can go in and digest proteins in there. It fights off invaders. And most importantly, it gets this bioterrain, this here, it gets it into the optimal state. It also, these guys, will go through your whole blood. This, th this will go through your body as a transient strain. They'll go wherever you need in your body. They'll find out where you have problems, and they'll start eating up any of the bad guys. Super probiotics are designed to take care, if you will, of the bad guys. That's what these guys take them out. We, 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 we take them out. Not like bombing the place where we're going to you know, create a bunch of problems, but it's like a smart special operations team that go in, isolates the bad guys, wipes all those guys out, and then moves on. So by taking them in the evenings before you go to bed, what happens is this allows you to experience uh, a greater sense of well-being, a greater sense of immunity, your digestive function, brain function, because let me take a little bit further. I mean, this is such a, this is such a vast topic. I get so excited about this. We'll talk about the different strains or the different types of bacteria. We just talked about the strains. Okay, so what are you looking for in a probiotic? Okay. What, what, what do I look for? I mean, you go to the cells now, there's probiotics everywhere, right? There's, and there's probiotics for two bucks, and there's probiotics for $200, and there's some that are need to be refrigerated, and some that don't. What are you looking for? Well, number one, most people think it's just the bacteria count. So it'll say, you know, it's got, you know, one billion or a hundred million or whatever it happens to be of these bacteria in a capsule. And the reality is, depending on what part of the world it is, that is at the part of processing, not necessarily when you get it in your door. Or some of them are, in, like in Canada, it's after one year. So you get a, a, the same product in America. This will say maybe 200 million. And this will say 1 billion, right, after one year. Because in Canada, that you have to have labeling how many bacteria are inside the capsule after a year. In America, it's how many are in the capsule at the point of capsulation. So this can be very, very um, misleading or confusing. So just to understand that is a big step up. But then that's not the most important thing, is how many. I mean, it's, it's one of the factors, but you also want to look at what is the doubling effect. So what is the doubling effect? How fast does the bacteria replicate inside your body? So for example, uh, friends of mine, uh, they make kombucha. And I love kombucha. Kombucha is a bacteria culture that's grown on these mushrooms and stuff like that. And you know, you can ferment it and you know, put sugar and carbonate. And, and it makes a really nice fizzy drink. So I don't drink, so it becomes my source of if I want like a champagne type experience, um, I use kombucha. And I, I highly recommend trying kombucha. It's wonderful. Uh, kombucha will take many days in order to ferment and, and create the kombucha. And that has to deal with the process and the sugar and amount of bacteria and all that sort of stuff. So everything has a doubling effect, okay? With a super, you know, some probiotics will, you know, ask your manufacturer how fast they go. What I can say with this, with our, by the way, our product, the super probiotic, it doubles every 20 minutes inside the body. Very, very aggressive. And you know we've had a lot of testimonials about this about people have been using. They had, you know, horrible, um, you know, digestive problems. Suddenly they took a whole handful or whatever, and you know within a few minutes it was over. Or food poisoning that happened to my business partner Matt a bunch of times. He had, him and his wife had food poisoning, and they they had it. Uh, my friend Dave's been traveling, had some digestive issues, took a handful of enzymes and probiotics, 
and eliminates it really quickly. And that's one of the beauty of it. We get so many testimonials about that. The next thing is you want to look at your expiry date on these things. So what is the, the expiry? Um, we talked a little bit about it here. I, I tend to stay away from refrigerated versions, and I'll tell you why. It's not that refrigeration is bad. It's that you know, when that comes from you know, wherever it's been manufactured and shipped, there are so many variables to keep that refrigerated that very often it's very, very hard to keep the strains. What you look for best, so there's refrigeration. Okay, that's one way. And then you can, and it, it's always good to store your bacteria in your fridge, even if you've got capsules. And then there is what's called freeze-dried, okay? So freeze-dried. And these will, for the most part, these have the longest expiry dates. These ones will last the longest. Um, freeze-dried is, is, is it, it, that allows you to encapsulate it. When you're inside the capsule, you want to make sure that it has natural mediums. You don't want any of, uh, you know, preservatives or chemical agents that are, you know, inside that with your freeze dried. And we freeze dry or encapsulate our products because we feel that just for portability, convenience, be able to take it on the road, to be able to utilize it everywhere you go, it's just simple, faster, it's easier, it's convenient, and it's more easy to make sure that we have maximum amount of count. And so when it goes inside your body, you get that doubling effect. And very quickly, yeah, you start taking over your digestive terrain, if you understand what we're saying. So um, I hope that was a little short, fast description. I mean, there's so much more about probiotics. Be sure to come back and, and check it out. I mean, probiotics are not just good for you know digestion, but they're also good for your immune system. And recent research has been showing that bacteria are very helpful in managing weight loss. Um, there's a lot of scientific evidence, and I know in my own case, when I blew myself out, you know, way, way back, when I gained all that weight after the Mr. Universe, and I was like, you know, all out of shape, went from Mr. Universe to Mr. Marshmallow, one of the key components to bring me back was the P3OM. I used that strain, and I took a lot of it because I realized that I had done some things you know, that really damaged my terrain. And I was able to rebuild it with these probiotics. They were able to wipe out the bad guys, repopulate, my strain grew up. I went on a diet, some of the stuff that we recommend are, you know, our holistic health nutrition programs that we put on there on the site, you can check for those. And this allowed me in just a few short months to really recapture my health. And I'm so grateful for it. And we get a lot of testimonials about that Oh, people that are coming in and have really transformed those. The thing is, is you want to stick with this for at least three months. Um, one of the things that we created the BioStack is that you put this whole program into place for three consistent months. It gets the terrain operational, get your enzymes, it gets you all filled up in the bucket. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So super probiotics, they're the future of the immune system. And be sure to check out what we have. And more importantly, Get some bacteria into your life. Good probiotics are essential to your health. They're essential to your brain function. They do so many different things. They hook into your immune system. They talk to your brain. They're amazing. Read some books on it. Check it out. We've got some links on the site uh, and see what you can do with probiotics in your life. And we'll see you on the next lesson.